you obviously feel so much better afterwards, but while you're doing them, you are like, this is the worst. I don't know why I do this to myself. Um, but, and then having to do more workouts after that, just, uh, no, thank you. Yeah, no, that's, yeah. I, we had one guy, I think that loved burpees and he was like, yeah, can we do burpees? I was like, who invited you to training today? <laughs> <laughs> but you don't, even, you don't even go here. Yeah. You're not even from here, man. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Whoever, whoever hasn't done burpees, congratulations to you. Just stay away from them. You, you know, but whoever yeah. has them, you know, I feel your pain because they suck. Uh, mm -hmm. But if we didn't complete, if we were lazy, and I can tell you right now, there were some days where I was just, I'm tired. I'm, I feel like my legs are just going to fall from underneath me. And they would call me out and they'd be like, what are you doing? I'm tired. Okay, great. We're going to start over, but you're going to add an extra 30, an extra 50. Oh. You know? Yeah, that's how, you know, and a lot of people are like, oh, well, they're just being mean. It's like, no, they're not being mean. They're helping you become better. Because yeah. if you go out there and you wrestle a match against, uh, I'll throw a good one out there. If you wrestle a match against Gunther for a 16-man oh, yeah. match, mm -hmm. are you going to be able to last 60 minutes with him? And when the going gets going, are you going to be going? Are you going to be able to compete at that fast pace when it's ready to hit that hit that shotgun, you know? Are you ready right. to hit that go faster? If you're not, then you do need to work on your cardio, and that's how they would explain it to us. And that's why they would do the things to us because it teaches us to not have that do not quit attitude. Right. And it also, I mean, that ties back to your diet again, because let's say you had your cheat meal or whatever the day before, or let's say you just worked a show Friday, you have nothing to eat, but Taco Bell the night before or the night of the next day when you start trying to do a workout and then having to, you know, do a show that night, you are going to feel it, and it is not going to. It's not going to feel good. Absolutely, absolutely. And Daga was huge on. Uh, I mean, they're both huge on dieting, but Daga was also right. very big on it. Um, I would ask him diet questions. Hey, how do you do these meals? How do you train? Can you teach me? And he would teach me. You know, we'd go to the gym, we'd work out. <clears throat> his leg digs were brutal. I remember not being able to walk correctly for maybe about a week and a half. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, his leg days are brutal. And, you know, I'd, I'd come back for more. You know, I would be like, shoot, I can't walk. But here I am hitting him up again the next day. Hey, you want to meet up at 7 o'clock? You want to go to the gym and work out? And you want to hit the ring right after or vice versa? You know, and he'd be like, shoot, okay, all right, yeah. You know, some people <laughs> – to, you know, other wrestlers, you know, or other people, they're just like, man, this guy's hard on me. Why does he hate me so much? But no, for me, it's, you know, I remember Tessa telling me, she's like, if he does this to you, he likes you. If he's hard on you, he likes you. If he doesn't awesome. do this to you, he doesn't care. <clears throat> but you have to show him that you care about the business and that you want to diet and you want to lift the parts. So a lot of my dieting and, and body transformation that happened, you know, a lot of the credit goes to both of them for helping me fix my cardio and my diet that I thought was good, but really wasn't. That's awesome that you figured that out too, because I know, you know, that is, even if you're just a regular person and you're not, you know, in the business or whatever, it's, it's actually dialing in on your diet and, you know, obviously your cardio, but just being consistent in the gym, like body transformations are huge. And if, you've ever gone through one of them, you know how hard it can be. And it is so rewarding at the end, um, especially when you put on even a t-shirt or a pair of jeans that you thought were too tight. And then all of a sudden you put it on and they're super baggy or they fit just right. And you're like, holy shit, what's going on right now? <laughs> because you've been consistent and you're killing it. Yeah. And, and I, did, I, to me, looking in the mirror, I didn't notice because I was like, man, man, I feel like I look the same. What the heck's going on? Right. Uh, and Tessa told me one day, she's like, dude, you're losing weight. Like, you look, you look lean. And I'm like, really? So I, you know, they started having me do before and after pictures. And I was like, okay, well, let's figure this out. Let's see where we're at. And you can start seeing my jawline form better. And you can start seeing, 
my delts for them and my quads, and I was just like, okay, this is good. This is cool. Like now, now I'm looking good. Um, right. And I, I think I have even have a before and after picture on my Instagram. It, you can see it in my face where it just looks like it looks fat. Like you can see it just looks terrible. And then you go three months down the road, I think it was, and you see just a slimmer face, a better body, and you start seeing, you know, everything looks better. So it was really cool to see all that. Congratulations. I know that is uh, – I've gone through it multiple times, and it is not easy. But like I said, it is super rewarding once you are on the other side of it. Yeah, no, absolutely. So shout out to the people who keep up with it. You know, it, it's a hell of a journey. And the guys, everybody who's struggling out there, just we all struggle. You're not alone, but mm-hmm. you can always pick it back up. <clears throat> yep. Be consistent and, you know, allow yourself – one cheat meal either a week or sometimes every two weeks, depending on how strict you want to be, but uh, enjoy that. And then, you know, go kill yourself in the gym the next day. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> now, training with both of, you know, the, on the roadside and with the Blanchard, I mean, obviously you were trying to put together a move set and figure out what moves do and don't work. When you kind of, uh, went through both of those trainings, what were some moves that you were like either picked up where you kind of just dropped off because you realized, all right, well, I, I'm not going to continue this uh, using this move because either it doesn't make sense or it's either uh, it, maybe it's a, a special occasion kind of move? Um, a special occasion move that I dropped off that I would do regularly was a springboard. Uh, okay. I would do those pretty often before both of, you know, training with Dustin and, and Daga and Tessa. Or, but then I realized, you know what, I don't need it because it doesn't make sense. Where am I going to place right. it that's going to make it look good? Um, another one was top rope moves. I would do maybe a, a an elbow or I would try to do a coup de gras or different stuff to try to fit it in to make it look good. And it just nothing made sense. So I was like, you know what? I got to drop this too. Mm-hmm. Um, super kicks, definitely drop those. I only add those, I maybe one for a big show. Okay. Um, if it fits there, but stuff that I added to my arsenal was, um, I I watched a lot of Brian. I've watched a lot of Brian Dennison, um, even before he was on WWF or WWE or anything. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but I actually knew Brian Danielson back in the day. <clears throat> oh. Yeah, he was uh, he used to wrestle at TWA with Shawn Michaels right. here. Yeah. So we saw him at a Cowboys dance hall here in town. Him and uh, Spanky had just had a cage match. I remember it. Oh. Yep, it was him and Spanky went at it. Um, it was a cage match, bloody, brutal, and it was fantastic. But, uh, one of our good friends, one of our family friends, knew Brian. He used to be a cook at TGI Friday, and uh, <laughs> he didn't show up. He didn't show up to my birthday party, but he did send like an autograph to to me for my birthday. So that was cool. Um, that was cool. But we got to meet him every time we went to go at TGI Friday. He would be, you know, they'd be like, "Hey, this, you know, that family's here," and he'd come out and talk with us and everything like that. So. Um, but I, I like watching a lot of Brian. So a lot of stuff that I use in my arsenal is, you know, per I, – I, I see Brian do it, but I tweak it up a little bit so that way I don't steal his stuff. Uh, right. I make it my – yeah, a lot, of, a lot of other stuff is from Brett Owen, maybe a little bit of Randy Orton, making everything look so crisp. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of that stuff I just add to my arsenal pretty much – every training session or every match. That's awesome. I mean, those are absolutely amazing people to take from as well. So uh, you're definitely getting the good stuff out there. Now, if people haven't seen you wrestle before, what are three matches they should go look out for? 
three matches that you can look out for. Let's see here. One of them is going to be. <clears throat> Let's see. I'm looking here. One is going to be against Drew to Red. Um, we wrestled for my TWA Texas Wrestling Championship, which I still have to this day. Um, I'm on a two-year run, believe it or not. Um, two years? That's awesome. Two-year two run. I mean, I lost to one of the guys. It was it was my fault. I didn't kick out. My shoulder gave out, but oh. we're not my gimmick wise. We're not counting it, so we're keeping the. <laughs> Five two years. Um, <clears throat> so one of them is against Drew Dredd. Uh, another one is going to be uh, KDP. That is a big. He's a big, big guy, but he moves like a small guy. So that's one of the three matches that is on there. And the other one is against Dill Dempsey, one of the uh, Texas standouts here in San Antonio. Uh, and Laredo, pretty much everywhere in Texas, he's he's one of the best. But yeah, those are the three matches you could look out for. I just watched that Drew one, and it was a it was a good match. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. <clears throat> now, as much as this is a physical sport, it's also a mental one as well. What kind of mental workouts do you try to do to, um, you know? either get yourself hyped for the match before or the come down afterwards um, because, you know, you usually start the day and end the day by yourself uh, and then coming down off having that, you know, adrenaline from the match and from the crowd. How do you kind of like to wind down? Uh, to, I guess before the show, I'm a nervous wreck all day. All day. My stomach is turning. Uh, I got a million things going through my head, like, am I going to be, am I going to do all these things today? Am I going to be able to get the fans to pop or to boo? What's going to happen? <laughs> um, but I have my manager, which is my brother, um, Big Red. Um, he helps me. He Even before he became my manager, he would help me get through a lot of the nerves. Um, and he would always... He always tries to calm me down and tell me, hey, you think about what's in front of you, not what's going to happen during the match. Because if you think about it before, if you think about it, your move this and your move here and your move there, everything, nothing's going to happen the way you want it to. Um, mm. And if anybody wants to follow him, uh, Big Red is his Nick underscore Garcia 6577. That is my manager, Big Red. Um, and... Now I just talk to the missus pretty much, and she helps me get through the day. <laughs> uh, she calms me down and just tells me, you know, you know what you bring to the table. You know you're good. Just go out there and do you. Um, so shout out to her for that. I love her for that because <laughs> without That's that, awesome. I'd, I'd probably just throw up everywhere. <laughs> 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 and then right before the music hits, I say a quick prayer. Um, to the man upstairs just to protect myself, my manager, Big Red, my uh, my other guy, Jason Way, um, protect all of us, protect guys in the ring, and then once the music hits, that light switch hits, man, and nothing else matters at that point except the destination in front. Um, and then after the match, it's a pretty much just close my eyes maybe for 30 seconds, take a deep breath, and I go back to normal. Nice. Pretty much just ready to go, ready to go home. <laughs> Switch them back off, yeah. <laughs> so we're still early in 2024. What do – how do you kind of look for the future? Do you do, you do it um, six months at a time, a year at a time, three years, five years? How do you normally try to uh, kind of plan out your future? Uh, when we're just talking for the year or just future, long-term future. I mean, both. It kind of, how do you, uh, how do you manage that? Um, I guess for book, like bookings month, like monthly goal, I try to go at least three to six months in advance. Um, 
just so that way i can have